for the time. Tea time. Yeah. This is tea time. Yeah. Make it a difference. One cup at a time. Tea time. So be sure to grab your tea, grab a seat, and tune in to Miss Liz. Tea time. Make it a difference. One cup at a time. Well, welcome to Tea Time. You know what that means. It means it's storytelling time and words. And today I have the incredible Jose Perel, per, 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 Periel in the house. And he's coming all the way from the United States, but he's originally from Venezuela. So you see how Miss Liz gets all the different countries in there. I, I, I find out where they come from when they were little. So we're going to get a little bit of Jose's story. And then we're going to get into a topic that maybe many of you Canadian listeners might not know about. We're going to talk about the Seago 6. Uh, hostage situation and Jose wrote a book called the from hero to villain and we're going to talk about his book today and all of that good stuff and we're going to talk about his motivational speaker uh, events and all that that he just finished doing and for all of my listeners out there you know that Miss Liz was in Sean Fair in 2021 and Jose just spoke at Sean Fair so we have that in common as well it's a really small world out there but before we get started we're going to get you over to Miss Liz's YouTube channel we're going to let get you to ring that little doorbell so you're notified when all these tea times go live and you can join the live conversations if you're listening to the replays we always want to i always want to ask you guys to push hashtag replay and let me know where you're tuning in from because i always like to give you a shout out as well for that uh for all of my listeners out there uh today's tea time may trigger so if you're feel if you feel like you're being triggered please do leave i i will not be offended by that at all Again, these tea times are for educational purposes only. Uh, we're not here to trigger and uh, hurt anybody. So let's get started with the disclaimer, some bio, and then we're going to get Jose in here and we're going to spill a good tea. And today's tea is called Never Give Up. That's right. His TEA is Never Give Up. So we're giving that message out to all the listeners out, out there today to never give up. Disclaimer for Miss Liz's Tea Time Live Show. Miss Liz, myself, is going live using StreamYard. Before leaving a comment, please grant StreamYard permission to see your name at StreamYard.com. Please be advised that the content brought forward for any Tea Time show hosted by myself, Miss Liz, is always brought forth in good faith. However, it may bring forth dialogues and opinions that are not representative of my platform. The facts and information are perceived to be accurate at the giving time of airing. All Tea Time guests and audience participants are responsible for using their good judgment and taking any action that may relate to the discussion. The content brought forward may include discussions for some where they may be emotionally at risk. Significant to know that the show is engaging in discussion forums only to inspire and em offer, offer awareness and connection and is not providing therapeutic advice. If you have any questions about the disclaimer or the panelist discussion, you may freely contact me, Miss Liz, through my email at bookingmissliz at gmail.com. Moving forward, should you choose to voluntarily participate in today's show in any aspect, I myself, Miss Liz, welcomes you. And should you decide that the show is not made for you at this time, I respect those wishes and we'll see you at a later show at a later date and time. Again, all tea time shows are hosted on a Thursday, 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you see a show on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it's a rescheduled special or uh, surprise tea time because that's how Miss Liz rolls. So now a little bit on my guest. While well, my guest is patiently waiting in the back room and we're going to get him up here in just a second. Jose per per Periel, I hope I'm saying his name right. If not, I'll get him to say it, is a seasoned leadership and resilient coach drawing from over three decades of ex experience in the global oil and gas industry. A former executive of the PDVSA, Venezuelan Na National Oil Company. His career has taken him around the world working on international joint ventures. However, his life took a dramatic turn when he was taken hostage in 2017 as part of the SECO 6, an ordeal that lasted five years. During his captivity, Jose smuggled over a thousand letters to his wife, a remarkable fet that became the foundation for his memoir. From Hero to Villain, My True Story of the Seago Six. Now a sought-after speaker and author, Jose shares his journey of survival, resilience, and faith, inspiring audience to overcome adversity and lead with courage. He is the founder of Survivor LLC, 
where he coaches individuals and organizations on building unbreakable leadership spirits. In addition to his coaching and speaking, Jose hosts the weekly talk show, Building Resilience, where he discuss, discusses the interaction of leadership, resilience, and spiritual growth. His work is a testament to the power of faith and per perseverance in the face of unimaginable challenges. Let's get him in. If you'd like to know more about the seagull, please check it out. I will have more information on Miss Liz's Facebook page. But until then, let me get Jose in here and let's start spilling some tea together. Welcome, Jose. Hello, how are you? Thank you for having me. Oh, I can't hear you. What happened to your mic? Oh, my mic is open. Oh, Can there. You I got you. Okay. <laughs> Welcome, Jose. Thank you so, for having me. So, Jose, I'm going to start the tea time like I always started off. So, who who were you as a little boy and who are you now as a grown man? Well, I grew up in Venezuela. In, and, um, well, I was born in Venezuela and, and um, I came to here to the U.S. very early, very young, when I was five years, because my father was a, a, a petroleum engineer in the Venezuelan oil and gas uh, uh, and he was assigned here to Tulsa, Oklahoma. There's the University of Tulsa. So he, he did his uh, master's degree there. And we stayed here living in the U.S. Uh, until I had like 11 years. I flew back to Venezuela when I was 11 years. And I, and I grew up in a place called San Tomé. That, during that time, that was in the 70s, where, the, where all the American oil companies were working in Venezuela, because Venezuela is an oil country. So I lived in an oil, oil, oil camp in the middle of the nowhere, but it was run by, by, by the Gulf Oil Company. It was called Mene Grande, and I grew up there. So it was kind of funny because even we, if we were living in Venezuela, we were having American customs. You know, we celebrated 4th of July, we celebrated Halloween, we did uh, Thanksgiving, a lot of American customs because, you know, that, that was the, the culture that there was at the time in Venezuela, American culture. So, Jose, let's get into uh, the seagull because a lot of my listeners are from Canada. So let's, let's take it back and, and tell them a little bit what seagull is. Okay, Canada is an oil producer too, so many people are very familiar because uh, Circo Petroleum is a company that is here based, U.S. based, is here in Houston, I live in Houston, but belongs to the Venezuelan oil company that is, P as you said, PDVSA, PDVSA in Spanish, PDVSA. PDVSA, for the listener that doesn't know, back to the 80s and the 90s, it was the fifth largest company of the world, okay? So it was big. And, and Venezuela is one of the largest producer of extra heavy oil, like Canada. So oh, the okay. oil that compete with the Venezuelan oil is the Canadian oil. Are very similar, very very similar. And and, and so Cidgo, it was U.S. based. We had three refineries here in the U.S. And one of the refineries is an area called Le Mont in Chicago, in the border with Canada. So the refinery of Le Mont is is run with Canadian oil. So we're very, Silgo is very tight with Canada because of that. So so Silgo has, has like 6,000 gas stations here in the U.S. So in the U.S. it's very common to see a, a Silgo gas station. I came here assigned by my company, PDVSA, as a, as a expat here to uh, Silgo, and I became a Silgo worker, and at the end, I, I finalized being the CEO of the company. I, I began to be the CEO in 2017. So in 2017, something happened that changed your life forever. And you wrote a book about it and a memoir. And that's the book that we're going to be talking about today. Uh, so what happened in 2017, Jose? I was ready to get retired because I, I, at that time I had 35 years career, long career. And the situation with Venezuela had been going bad. People, I don't know if in Canada they're familiar, but Venezuela became a com communist regime. There are a lot of Venezuelans that flew out, out of the country. By the way, in Canada, there are a lot of Venezuelans today because of that bad economical and political situation. So all these things was going on. And, uh, and it was during the Trump administration. By the way, today is election day. So it's like a cycle that is coming back. So, <laughs> so, so, 
Repeat of history, right? <laughs> yeah, repeated is the full cycle, full cycle. It's amazing. So so that that situation was going bad between the two countries. I never thought that I could get in the middle of a dispute in between two countries. Can you imagine that? So I was uh, 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 with my wife hearing a movie and I received a call to go a last minute meeting. And I, as I said, I was going to get retired in a, in a couple of months. So I was in a, my retirement mode. So I went to the meeting. It was a presentation that, that, that I was asked to do. And I flew with my five top executives, the five vice presidents. So I was the president with the five vice presidents, kind of the board. And we went to the meeting and it began to be a settlement. It began to be an ambush. So we were taken hostage by the Venezuelan government because we were dual citizens and they wanted to get uh, some leverage with the U.S. And the, the decision they took was take take us. They, they didn't have what to leverage. So so they knew our case. And, and that's why we get caught in the middle of this political situation. And unfortunately for us and for my colleagues, it lasted five years. And that's part of the story that I tell in my book. Now, Jose, the title of your book, From Hero to Villain, tell us why you, you, you have that title. Because when I, when I seen the title, I was like, Okay, hero to villain. So he was a good guy, but then turned to the bad guy. Like well, but, but that is exactly what happened because uh, I was a good guy for in, in the in the in the view of of PDVSA. I was like a hero, you know. I did a long career, very successful, and I was going to that meeting. I was doing a presentation that we were revamping a refinery in Aruba, in Aruba Island. So I do, I did a presentation. It was like one thousand people, everybody standing. Uh, crowding, wonderful. And five minutes after came the guard, the military police, and we were in handcuffs, accused to be American spy. We became the worst of the villains. So that's why it became to, from the, being a hero. And five minutes after, I was the worst of the villain. So I decided to put it from hero to villain. Well, it, it reminded me of uh, Robin Hood. You know, how <laughs> I was just like, how did he become the hero and then go to the villain? Well, and then if you I've, go, I've if seen you go, work, if Jose, you and go, I'm just like, he's a good guy. Like, if you go to the to the recording, I have in my in my YouTube, I had the recording the day that the president of Venezuela announced that we were captured. He accused us to be a lot of things that we committed treason to the country, that we did corruption and embezzlement, and we were the worst of the American spy that had been traitor of the country. So they accused us to be a lot. So we became like the villains of the story. Wow. That must have really impacted your life, like big time, like in that moment, one minute a hero, the next minute a villain. I, I'm gonna say something here that that maybe and I this story I have I, I tell it in my book. Uh, one month before my, my my situation happened, I I was in the planning of my retirement and my boss was kind of a sketchy giving me the if it, the approval. So I, I had to flew flew to Venezuela several times to ask him to accept my retirement. So one month before my situation in October. My situation happened in November 2017. So I flew in October 2017 to Caracas, Venezuela, and I get the final approval of, of, of my retirement. So I was flying back to, to here to the U.S., and when I was in the, in, the, in the corporate plane, I was flying back, I received a call, and that call was from my PR lady telling me that I, I needed to be a, next day in a closing of an event. There is a big summit that still goes host, and it's, it was going to be on a Sunday. So I, I told her, yes, okay. So I, I, I go to the, the event next day with my wife. And in the closing, they brought the motivational a, a speaker that is called Captain Phillips. You know, the guy of the movie that Tom Ham did in the movie? The real Captain Phillips was the, the speaker. And his, his speech was navigating the turbulent waters. And he was talking about his hostage situation because he became to be a hostage of the Somali pirates, okay? So that guy finished his speech and he sit down with me and uh, and I told him that he had a quite of a journey. And he told me that his story was even worse than the movie because in the movie they sh shortened the story. So his story was even worse of the movie. But he told me this. He told me that a human being has inside an inner force that is 
you can unleash your unbreakable spirit if you connect with God. And I didn't know why that guy told me that. You know, I got like, why this guy told me this? And I, I got, you know, I went to my house driving, thinking in those words. You know what happened? That one month after, when, when I was captured, going to the dungeon with handcuffs, I was thinking in, in, in that speech, what that guy told me. And, 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 and believe me, that made me survive. When I learned that everybody has inside that inner force that can unleash your unbreakable spirit by connecting with God, because that's what we did. Yeah. That's what everybody can do it. Everybody can do it. And that's today part of my coaching program. Everybody can do it. Well, Jose, you were captured for five years. So that had to have really changed your life. Like one minute you're speaking, the next minute you're hostage. Uh, how did that impact your life? In the first year, I didn't know how I made it. Today, I still don't know how I made it because we were separated. So I, I, my first year was in solitary confinement with a light turn on all day long. And, and I was all day hearing torture. So I wasn't having physical torture, but I was hearing physical torture. So it was a psychological torture. Yeah. And uh, and I didn't have nothing, no books, no, nothing, nothing. I was there uh, uh, all day thinking. And my, my first thought was really terrible. I was even thinking to take my life because uh, can you imagine being in a communist regime, being accused to be a spy? What, what can be your fate? Yeah. So, so I, I was really having bad thoughts. But, but again, when, when I begin to think in what this guy told me, I begin to think in my family. I, I, one day, I don't, I don't know when, in what moment, I said, hey, hey, wake up, take control of your life back, change your mindset. You need to come back in strong, in body, spirit, because you have a family outside there waiting for you. And that changed my mind. And that changed my life. After that, my situation changed. Uh, uh, as I said, one year uh, during that situation, we were re reunited with the, the, my other colleagues and we stayed together the next four years. And we created, right, like I call it, like a survivor plan. And we get stick to the plan during four years and we came back. We came back. So the other four guys that you were hostage with, are you still in contact with them today? We are in contact. Uh, five, five. We are. We were six. That way, we were called the six go six because six. Oh, okay. Six. Yes, yes, yes. We were six. Six go six. No, yes. We are in contact. We are in contact. Some of them, for personal reason, decided to go silent. So now they have a quiet life, retired of everything. They don't have social media, nothing. But we are in touch, and and not only in touch, we are now connected because. Uh, the mayor of Houston in, in last December is going to be one year now. He did a proclamation to us, to the six of us, and he declared the six or six day on December 19 every year. So in this December, we're going to have a celebration of our, our, our first anniversary. So, so we got connected forever because of that. Our story now, when, for life. Yeah. And Jose, when I did some research on hostage, I didn't know that there was a lot of hostage situations that happened in the U.S. and in the different countries. And a lot of my listeners might not know this as well, but they there's also a U.S. hostage uh, foundation, I believe, I, I found somewhere that, yeah, you got, I, I, that they, you're on a board or I, something, right? Very connected to all these foundations. I work with Hostage U.S. I work with James Foley Legacy Foundation. I work with the Bring Our Family Home Campaign. I, I, I work with the Hosted A Worldwide. I work with the Amer Fakuri Foundation. I have been close with the Richardson Center, the Sufan Center. There are many foundations today that take care of the hostess. I'm more involved with ones than the other. For example, I, in September, one month ago, I was invited to the UN by the Hosted A Worldwide. Last year, I did an event with Hosted US and, uh, and, and I did a blog also with Hosted uh, Jane Foley Foundation and also the Bring Our Family Home Campaign. So I have been working, advocating for them. And what you said is true. There are a lot of hostages and the people doesn't know. By the way, there are a very famous case in Canada of two, the, the two marks, two guys that were hosted in, in China. It was a very famous case of, of, in Canada because you know, one of the most advanced legislations in the world to taking care of hostages is the Canadian 
uh, uh, legislation is a reference. So Canada has done a lot uh, 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 for legislation of the um, hostage situation. Well, and y you know, and when I found all of these foundations and uh, these organizations and uh, boards and all that, I was like blown away because that shows just how much is out there that is happening that a lot of people don't even know about, that a lot of people are not aware of. Uh, you know, when you reached out to be on Tea Time, Jose, I, I had never heard of Seago because I'm in Canada, right? Uh, and I was like, I need to know more about this. And that's how I am. I, I'm just a, a book nerd and I just like to find out things and get that out there and, and get my listeners to find out that these situations are going on. Um, you were hostage for five years. And in that five years, you wrote a thousand letters to your wife. How, how did you get those letters to her? Well, you know, after one year, as I said, we were reunited at the four and that happened because the relation with 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 the U.S. and Venezuela were totally broken. They 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 recalled the two ambassadors, so there was no direct contact. So the U.S. what did what did the U.S. government? They contacted the U.N. So the U.N. flew to Venezuela and they began to take care of or, or try to pressure uh, our our case. So they 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 got the. Uh, the approval that put us the six together and they begin to allow us our families to bring food our families not the government our families so so every family began to handle their case in my particular case the decision of my family was that my elder son he moved to colombia he, he began to provide me food from colombia to venezuela and he did it during four years so can you imagine that four years doing that logistics so so when I begin to receive the food, they are, allow us to have it three three days in the week. So not every week and not every day, three three times in the week. So they brought this in some cans already prepared. So I had to return two days after the, the cans that, that was empty. So I discovered that if you put the cans with the double bottom together, they they cannot see that there's something there. So I begin to smuggle the dealers inside the cans. The first day I did that was like one year after, in December 2018. I remember December 30, 2018. One year after I've been there, I decided to smuggle the first letter and it went through. And my surprise was when I received the other the, two days after the food and I opened the cans and I found the letter of my wife. So we begin to do it like that way, and it begin to be done. We begin to do it that three years. We keep doing that three years. They never discovered the letter. I don't know how. So, so for me was not only the letter was not only the connection with with, with my family, was that I really was aware of everything that was going on because we we created like a secret code. So we have ways that we say things that if in the case they discovered the letters, they didn't know what we were talking about. I was informed of everything, everything, everything. So when, 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 when I begin to receive visits, like, I don't know, two years after, I don't remember when, I begin to receive somebody, that, the person that was providing me the food, begin to visit me during the weekends. He got surprised how much I was informed. Because she was telling me everything. So I knew all the negotiations that was going on, everything. I was very, very informed because of those letters. But those letters for me, when I came back, that I, I didn't know that my wife, my wife has compiled them. For me, it was a surprise when I saw that she has compiled all those letters and not only compiled it, she put it in Word. So I already had the letters in Word. See, the book was almost ready, you know. There you so go. I, so I had a great foundation for the book and when i begin to re read those letters to to convert in the book i cannot stop crying i cannot stop crying because i saw all the suffering that i was going through because that 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 is the emotion that you will find in the book because it's me talking in the jail it's me talking in the jail so you are going to be reading me what i'm saying in the jail and, and i got surprised because I, I, at the end of the book, I do a lot of reflections. When, we're, when we were almost ready to be come back because we, we were having visits of the Ambassador Carson that was having direct negotiation. So we knew that it was a matter of time. So we were prepared to come back. 
are, are in our mind. We were ready to come back. So now, now I'm I'm infused with a lot of hope. Now I'm infused with a lot, a lot of faith because we were reading the Bible. You know, we were in another moment. So when when I I I had the opportunity to go back to those letters at that moment, I told my wife, I I don't believe I wrote this. You know, it was incredible. But yeah, but I had that that opportunity. And let me tell you something else. One of the directors of Hosted US, that foundation that you mentioned, he is a former hosted too. He was oh, wow. years ago. I'm not going to mention his name for, for confidentiality, but he's one of the directors. And, and when I begin to work with them, because Hosted US is a wonderful foundation that they provide you uh, mental and physical uh, support. They have a lot of... Uh, uh, therapies, a psychologist that do advocacy with them. I have a therapy that I see. I saw her this morning. We we, we meet every Tuesday since I came back. And now we became friends. So uh, and when he, he knew that I had the letters because I had told the guy that was talking with me my, the story that I had the letters that I wanted to convert in a book. He called me. He called me. Hey, Jose, I want to have a Zoom with you. So this guy, he, I, I told him how I, I did with the letters. And he, he told me, Jose, when I came back, I, I he wrote his book after three years. Because for him, it was difficult to go back to the story. He told him, man, what a blessing you have that you have those letters. Because you don't have to go back to your memories. You have it there. Everything yeah. is there. So he he was like, a, wow, you have your letters. <laughs> He was like, oh, I, I'm, I'm being jealous of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jose, have you ever asked your wife how she felt when she got that first letter? Yes, yes. Uh, let me tell you, I'm encouraging my wife to write her book, too, because she has quite of a story, too. Because I'm talking about my story, but yep. her story... Because what happened is when you're in a situation like this, and this is something that today I talk, when you're going to any situation in life, you are you are in your situation, and and it's, it depends on you how long you stay or not stay in, in, in dealing with the when you grief and or, and you decide to move on. But the problem is the family, because the family doesn't know what's going on. They don't know what's going on with you. With I stayed months without talking with her. Months. She didn't know what was going. She didn't know how I was. So it becomes a, a big suffering for the family, and they put their life in pause. So, so when she received the first letter, she was scared to death. When she received the, my first letter, she said, "Oh, this is gonna be." Ter-. She didn't sleep that day because she was really scared. Yeah, the, the risk I have taken. Well, she was probably fearful that something might happen if somebody found of out about course, that, right? Of course, of course, of course, yeah, definitely, yeah. So, Jose, has that brought you and your wife closer together? I'm sorry, thank Has that brought you closer together, this situation? Oh, wow. God. I cannot say it more. Of course, of course. I'm a, a guy that today I'm not the same guy that I was before. And this is something that today is part of my coaching program because I discovered that you can be successful in a business, but you need to have a personal fulfillment. And, and, and I was missing that piece. And, 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 I, and, and I went through a lot of reflections. And today I'm a man of God. I do church service with her. With her, by the way, I, today we were talking about that with my therapist. We had like one month without talking. And, and I was telling her all the things that I have been doing this month. I've done a lot. And I told her, her name is Daisy. I said, Daisy. The, the beauty of, of everything that now Mervis and me are so close. We do all, all everything together. In my previous life, I even didn't take her call. I didn't have time for her. I was always busy. And I was a busy guy. That, that's why I tell the, the, the people, hey, take care of your personal life. Yeah. Go to family. Hug your kids. Say that you love them. Because you will never, never know when you're going to miss them. And believe me, you miss them. You miss yeah. them. Well, that and, 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 you know, and that's what it happens, right? Challenges and life situations in life really make us see what really is important to us. Business and, and all of that is nice, but family, that's who we have to take care of, right? We have to take care of our home first. Yeah. Uh, so, Jose, 
When you travel now, do you get fearful? I have not gone outside the U.S. yet. I'm going to do my first travel outside the U.S. in in January. That I got invited today, by the way, to go to an event in London. So I invited to go in, in January in London, in March in, in France. So they're going to be my two uh, abroad. Uh, and let me tell you, yes, I'm not going to lie here. I have a case. I have a friend that he was, we're friends today. He was a hostage in an African country. I'm not going to mention because maybe the people will recognize him. Well, that guy, he came back. And he was invited to receive an award in London last year. And when he went to Heathrow, uh, he, he had a red uh, Interpol flag. And he, he had a bad time. They, they was going to put in him in jail. So he, the, the U.S. ambassador had to intervene. The State Department had to intervene in their case. So I'm before traveling, I'm going to call the, the, the people here and that take care and say, I'm going to travel. So I want to be safe, you know. <laughs> Yeah. I, I Well, I can imagine, you know, going through that situation, you were in your own country and you, you got hostage. So the travel again, uh, we had a question here. Have you, do you plan on ever going back to Venezuela? No, no. We be, after, the only way I can go to Venezuela is that that regime is taken off. I will never, I, I, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. You don't trust it, right? No, of course not. No, no, no. Well, let me tell you, one of the, one, there is a very famous journalist of Venezuela that he was with me as a political prisoner, and he was released like uh, six months ago, and, and, and they, 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 they put him back in jail again. He's now again in jail. So he has like, yeah. three months, he was caught back and put him back in jail. Yeah, that's going to be really fearful. So you, you you mentioned these things that are coming up in London and in France and all that. Is that part of the motivational speaking? Yes. 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 The, what, the, the London is is a lady that I met in 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 Sean Fair's event. She's from London. Wonderful lady. We did a great connection, and she called me this morning. She she said when we were there in Detroit, she told me, "Hey, I, because the people got so blown their mind my story." When I when I, I I went to the states, we, we were in a uh, Michigan State uh, University. So when I I, I I did my speech, my speech is called "From Captivity to Freedom," and I, I talk about how you can overcome things in life, and and because I always say that you can say that you're a leader, but that your real leadership is tested when you're pushed out your comfort zone and something unexpected comes in your life. That is where you're gonna test if you're a leader or not. So that's what happened to me. That we, we, I needed to. I began to cheer my my colleagues. They, so I, 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 I was kind of the leader, and and they also were became leaders. And we were all leaders cheering each, each other. You know? Well, that's it, right? Leadership is cheering everybody else on. It's not just me, 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 right? And that was part of your situation as well. When you were in that hostage situation, it was about teamwork, right? Building that plaque and survival plan together, working together. Uh, so I did your quiz on your website on what type of leader. Yes, I did. And I got servant leader. leader. So tell me a little bit what the servant leader is. The servant leader is exactly what you're saying. Is the, ser the servant leader is who take care of the others. Really take care, but it's not. It's not a cliche. Is that really take care of the other? I'm a servant leader, definitely. I'm a servant leader because I believe in the people. I believe that everything is related to human relations. I believe that if you're empathic with your employees and they feel that you really take care of them and and you take them in consideration, they're gonna be loyal to you. So this is what a servant leader does. Uh, that, because you can be in a, a visionary leader like you know like Elon Musk, like, like, and, but maybe you can be visionary. But because I, I I don't know Elon Musk in person, but he doesn't look like a servant leader, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> well, I, I was really curious to know because I uh, you know 
being part of Sean Fair's leadership, you, you want to know what kind of leader you are, right? Because it is an experience yeah. uh, for anybody who hasn't seen Sean Fair's leadership experiences tours, check them out. He has them, I believe quarterly, uh, three times a month, every three months he has shows going on. Uh, he found Miss Liz. So, you know, like, and he's, he's a humble man. Check him out. Uh, he's going to be in London, by the way, he's going to be with me in London. Well, there you go. See, uh, but it's just a small world. Uh, when I found out that you were speaking at Sean Ferris, I was like, oh, my goodness, look at that. It's, it really is a small world out there. Uh, so I want to talk about your tea because the tea that you gave me, Jose, is never give up. Yeah. Why would you give me never give up? Let me show you. I, I don't know if you can see it here. I have I have this band that says never give up. This band was created when we were in there. Our kids created something called the Single Six Coalition here. And they put it, the, the motto was never give up. And they created a, a teacher that says never give up. You know what was my surprise? That I, I was in July invited to an event in Washington. And, and, I, and I was invited to go to the State Department to, to the people that get a release. They did like a, you know, a gathering with them. So two years after... Uh, meeting with us and knowing how we're doing. And when I came in the building of the State Department and I go into the office of, of this group, the first thing that I, I found in the entrance was beside the U.S. flag was the teacher that said, never give up. And in a, in, in a, in a, in a award that we give uh, to the Ambassador Roger Carson because we called him Captain America. And, and and he and we gave him a Captain American award. So he has it in the entrance of, of, of the building. You can see the teacher that says never give up, and you see the the, the Captain America. So for me it was a, a, a proud because really never give up for me is today my motto. In your life, anything that you're going in your life, never give up. If you fail or you fall, stand up and keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going and never, never give up because that's what we did. That's what we did. And if anybody that's hearing this does that, at the end, you will be successful. Because imagine, I, I'm, I'm today very fan of the, of the Bible. Think about the Bible people, anybody, Solomon. Joseph, Abraham, whoever, Paul, all of them have the same pattern. They always went to severe adversities in their life and they made it. Absolutely. And you know why they made it? Because at first they had a calling, but they never gave up. That's why they made it. They always, so that, 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 that's, that's today. When somebody today say to me, hey, that's impossible. For me, nothing is impossible. <laughs> right it, it, it's changing our changing the programming that we're being told that we can't do it that you you know it's not possible yes it is it, it you might fumble you might fall you might need to get up 10 times 11 times 12 times but you can do it if you never give up i really love that never give up because we talked about this at, uh, yesterday with my guests about the universe giving us these messages and giving us these signs that we, if we really pay attention, it's there. And your sign was to never give up. In year one, you were thinking, you know, the worst. And then you were something that light clicked on and you were like, nope, can't give up, you mm -hmm. know. Um, so today, yeah, with your children, Jose, because you have children, how, how do your children feel about you? And you becoming a motivational speaker and sharing your story. <laughs> That's a great question. My 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 kid doesn't doesn't believe that because in my past I was like I, I didn't have social media, I, I I was like invisible because I didn't like nothing. So they don't they, they don't believe that I'm all all over today. They love it because they know that I feel passion for, for that. But for them, well, at the beginning is serious. Dad, you want to do that? <laughs> you know when when my son came back. That that, that that one that was in Colombia providing me food during four years. He came back. I came back in October 2022. He came back in January 2023 because he had to set up everything to come back to, to here to the U.S. And when he came back, he told me, hey, Dad, I'm done with you. 
I'm done with you. <laughs> That's it. I'm on. <laughs> so, Jose, how many kids do you have? I have three kids. I have three kids. Uh, they, all of them are grown up. John has a uh, 37. Joao has 33, going to 34. And Sarah has 27. And I have oh. three grandkids. So you're a grandpa too? I'm a three, three kids a grandpa, yes. So how does that and how does that make you feel being a grandpa? For me, it's great. You know, I, I have a story with my uh, my eldest uh, grandson, uh, Sebastian, because uh, he was living with, uh, with my son in Colombia, and my son always was lying to him about my situation. Was telling that the grandpa was in meeting, flying that he so so uh, uh, he didn't know that one day. Uh, Sebastian began to you know, hear what was going on. He began to Google and he came to his uh, uh, brother and said, hey, grandpa is in jail in Venezuela. He, he's a hostage. Thank you. So, so when I came back and I, I, I was writing the, the book, I was editing the book, he sat down be, beside me and said, grandpa, tell me everything. <laughs> well, that's nice that he, he asked that, right? But when he heard the word hostage, did he understand what hostage meant? No, 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 no. Of course not. I had to explain it. The people, the, the hostage world is a world that for me is kind of bizarre because typically the person that go to a situation like me are high stake people, but not politicians. Okay. Maybe you can be a businessman or you can be a religious uh, uh, authority or a pastor or whatever, because they, they, they take you and it has to be somebody that, that can be some interest to the government. For example, if they take a Canadian hostage, they want somebody they can leverage. Or if they take care of a German hostage, they, they always try to leverage you because the problem with the hostage situation that is called the hostage diplomacy is that it's a very sophisticated way to do uh, diplomacy where they take you, they leverage you, and they ask to get you released a lot. It began to be a lot. In our case, they were asking to get relief sanctions, get an oil embargo lifted, or, or, or a drug lord very close to the government get freed. So they begin to ask a lot. Yeah. So that's why this negotiation takes so long because it's complicated. It has to be approved by the Congress. So, you know, it becomes to be very, very, Complicated. So, Jose, are you in any danger now that you're out? Well, I, I take care of my security. I take care of my security, but I, I'm not a threat because, again, I'm not a politician. I can be a threat because I say things in my book and maybe people don't like. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the truth, right? And the truth is hard to hear. Yeah. You know, I, we live in a world where the truth is doesn't want to be heard. It doesn't want to be seen. Uh, and I and that's what I really like about memoirs is it gives you a chance to express your story, your ver vision of it and version of it. You know, uh, the other hostage that were with you, have they read your book? I never have asked to tell you the truth because the way I did my book, let me tell you something. That's why my book is called my true story of the Silgo Six. I, I was very clear to put it that that is my story because my book is based on my letters. That means it's my very personal journey. I was very respectful in my book and, and I do a big disclaimer in the, in, the, in, the, in the beginning. If you read my book, the first uh, se section is a disclaimer where I disclaim that, that I, for respect of them, I don't mention them. I don't mention them. Uh, the, the only the only mention of them is the day that we went to the plane because they were with me in the plane. But after we were captured, I don't mention them. So so for is I talking about my story because I wanted to be respectful because for example Jorge he's gonna write his book. I believe he's gonna release it next 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 year. He's gonna tell his story. Maybe they're gonna be similar because we were all together. But everybody is telling the story from their point of view. So it, I was very respectful that, that uh, given the chance that anybody can, if, if, if there are going to be six books, there are going to be six books. 
Well, and, and that's the importance that we need to get out there, right? Is it's your story, your personal story, uh, you know, and there might be different uh, versions of it because that's their version of how they went through and what they experienced. Uh, you know, you were able to express it with your wife, with the letters, were other, other uh, hostages able to write letters to their loved ones? It's really funny, but yes. And you know why? Because when they, they knew that I was doing the letters, and, and I had up, you know, all the logistics. I be, I became like a courier for all the other guys sending letters. I, at some point, I was sending in the in, in the camp six letters. You know? So I, I began to, I, I, at some point, they begin to do But yes, everybody at some point was having contact because we needed to do it because we were in isolation. Can you imagine having 10 months without knowing about your family? Yeah. It's crazy. Jose, let's get into that because you were gone for five years. So how did the world change for you for five years when you that's came back? Eight question, and that's going to be my second book. <laughs> so be, be ready. My second book is going to talk about the life after you come. You come like you're coming in a time machine. That That's the, the, the best way to express this. Imagine that you have been lost in translation in the space and you appear five years after in a world that you don't recognize. It's a post-pandemic world that I didn't I didn't suffer the pandemic. I, I was in jail. So I I, I, I I didn't know all the crazy things that happened during the pandemic. So now I came back and I found that people are here that you have the people are, are very sensitive. And you say something, they have their skin, you know, very, very sensitive. So so I, I didn't recognize it, the, the, the world. For me, it was really difficult at the beginning. And, and putting back your life. Simple things like taking back my driver license was a pain in the ass. Getting all my paper back because the people don't understand that you were not here. I remember, I'm going to say this, that I had with one of these big bank, I had a credit card, a corporate credit card, and he had five years in collection. <laughs> I didn't know that. So when I came back, I, I found that in that, that, and, and, and hosted U.S., one of the things that they do is help you in reorganize all your finances. So I, with an officer of hosted U.S., talking with the officer of the bank, and he they were explaining, we represent hosted U.S., we take care of hosted, that we're here in representation of the U.S. government, blah, 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 blah. And he did that speech to the officer. That guy didn't understand what was going on. He was treating me like I was a guy that was laid off to, for, of her job the day after. And I told the guy, hey, 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 what part of the story didn't you get that I had five years being hostage? So the people don't get it. Yeah. The people don't get it. It's difficult. Well, I, I say this all the time, Jose. If you don't live it, you don't understand it. You know? And it's hard for people to understand because they don't put themselves in, in that situation. Yeah. You know, they're fast to judge it. They're fast to misunderstand it. Or they're fast to say, oh, well, that's just an excuse. Get over it. You know, uh, that was your story. Now you're back. Let's get back to work. You know, uh, get over it. Get over it. We hear that a lot, right? Especially when you go through challenges and struggles in life. We always hear that. Oh, you know what? Get over it. Just move on. So have you gotten that from a lot of people? Yes, of course. A lot. A lot. A lot. But, but, you know, that's why I decided to be, begin to talk. That, that, that what pushed me to begin to be a speaker and, and write a book and, and did a coaching because I, I, and, and I do advocacy also for the housing community. As I said, I'm connected with the foundation. Every time they need me, they know they can have me because I, I, I put my image with them as a former hostage. And, um, one of the things that I decided to do this is exactly to try to, you know, the people understand more about this because the people don't get it. The people think that when you come back, it's a, it's a love story, the oh, end of a tribulation, a love story. No, it's, it's another round that is coming. That's why I decided that my second book is going to talk about that. Well, there's a lot of healing journey, a lot of trauma, a lot of triggers. Of I, I begin to have PTSD event. My my therapist uh, Daisy, she told me because she I was thinking that I was okay, and she, she told me be aware because the, you you can begin to have triggers, and I had my first trigger like one month after I came back. It was a big trigger. I I was what's going on with me, 
I, I did because things like, for example, this guy, they, they, when they lock us in the jail, they did have this big song, sound with a lock. Crunk, crunk. Every time I heard that metallic sound, I begin to shake. I couldn't not hear somebody yelling me near to my eyes because that's what this guy did to us. So there begin to be a lot of triggers. And but I, I'm gonna say here openly that Daisy has been a blessing because she she began to manage my therapy in a way that I could begin to l go back to normal. For example, she began to do regression with me and I could go back to the jail and talk with the Jose that was there and hug him and tell him that that we're free, that let her go. I began to swim in the nights and I was swimming with him and I, 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 I let him go in the water. So I began to do things that she began to teach me how to do it. And, and that began to heal me. And talking like I'm talking today, and, and when I write and I, I write articles and I do my newsletter, whatever I'm doing, all that has been part of my healing process. Well, I really want to thank you for being a voice because, you know, there's a lot of voiceless people out there. And I'm glad that you're sharing your story because you're bringing awareness to topics that need to be aware of. Uh, yep. You know, we, we got to stop keeping everything in the quiet. We got to keep, you know, keeping all the trauma and PTSD and all triggers. Those are things we should be speaking about because those are real life effects that are affecting people across the globe, not just U.S., not just Canada, okay. but Globally. all over. Right. Um, so, Jose, you have this Jose Connect. So for people to connect, what's that all about? Tell us about that. <laughs> Jose Connect, because I believe that today I'm a connector. You can see here, Jose Connect, and, and, you, and you see my book in, in the banner. Um, because for me, the connection is how you really can find your path that, from your business and your personal fulfillment. Because this is something key, that people sometimes put their life in pause because they want to be successful. So they work a lot being successful. They work a lot in being, if you're having a business, have a successful business, or if you're in a, in a company, have a successful career. So you put your life aside. You put your family, you put your marriage, your wife, you put your friends, you put yourself aside. So I rediscovered, because I rediscovered that all that you need to have that balance. So that's what Jose Connect it, it, it does. So when you go to my webpage, you can find that my coaching program, I have like two tiers of coaching. I have one that is more to the C-suite, that is more dedicated to this, but I have another one that is more for a business owner, entrepreneur, startup, where I can lead them, how they can navigate their things in their life and, and be successful. Things like communication. People sometimes struggle to have a good communication with their employee or being empathic with their employee or, 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 or really having a, a clear vision that you want to transmit to your employee. This is the thing that I not only coach them, I talk it, I do it in my newsletter that is called Building Resilient and I do it in my weekly podcast that I do every Monday that is called also Building Resilience. For example, this, this uh, Monday, I talk about the 2025 goals, how to achieve successful goals. And I was talking to the people. Very simple thing that you have to do to be, become successful with your goals. But for me, uh, uh, um, the most important thing, Ms. Liz, is that the connection with, with, with your entity, whatever you, you, you believe. In, in my case, I'm a God believer. Yeah. So Need to have that connection because that's what we're gonna give you that connection to to your your greatness and when you make that connection you will get surprised because this is what faith does when you when you see the thing before they happen so you you work for that and, and maybe it will surprise how things can happen even when you're not expecting them to happen, because now you're you're aligned, you're focused. So this is all the things that today I, I try to express to the people. And well, this is for me. 
Absolutely. Right. And there's opportunities to knock on your door and you're like, who, me? Like, you know, uh, back to Sean Farrow, when he knocked on my door, I was like, I just serve tea. Like, I'm just a tea lady. Uh, I just like storytelling and words. And I like to motivate people to encourage to share their stories. You know, uh, overcoming stuff, it really is needed in today's world. Our stories really need to be needed in today's world. Uh, Jose, you gave me the word super positively when I asked you to give me a word for to describe yourself. Why did you give me that word? Well, because, you gave me two because it's super positively. So those are two words. Because because I'm a super positive guy. I always was a positive guy. This is something that is part of my my DNA. I, I always was a positive guy. But after that experience, I'm not, not only positive, I'm super positive. Because I really believe that things in life, you can make it and nothing is impossible and you have to keep going and never give up so that, that that's my mindset and i asked you your favorite color and if anybody can tell if you look at jose's background <laughs> it's blue so his favorite color is blue so why blue jose to tell you the truth i don't know but i always have blue is my color blue is color of like like, like uh hope is a color of hope but my thing always has been blue everything so when i rebranded my web page i said i want it to be blue everything blue <laughs> I, I and it looks good i like the blue i like the black it looks good especially on a man blue i, I put a blue suit on next time jose <laughs> <laughs> so jose what message would you like to leave everybody out there with today well as i said nothing is impossible everything can be done you can overcome anything in life. You need to get that connection with your, your, your superiority, in my case, connected with God. And, and, and you can unleash that unbreakable spirit that you have inside and never give up. Never give up. So, Jose, let's, let's get your podcast out there so people can tune into that. So when, when, the, when is that and how can they find that? I do me, my podcast every Monday morning, 8 a.m. Central Time. Look what I do. I write my newsletter <coughs> during the weekend that is called Building Resilience. And I talk about the topic that I'm going to talk in the podcast. So what I do is I put the newsletter so that people can read it, subscribe it, and we, we can understand what I'm going to talk. When I go to the podcast on Monday, I do it simultaneously in a Facebook Live, in a Christian channel called HOD Radio Network, and I do a LinkedIn audio room. Why I do the LinkedIn of your room? Because I love to bring people to the stage to, so they can speak. So I do like a 30 minutes talk, talking about the topic, try to, and put in my, 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 my example, the, the thing that I went through, because I went through a lot of things in my life. So I can talk a lot about leadership, okay? Because I, situation that I, I really handle, that I, I try to put examples. And after those 30 minutes, I open the mics. And, and I got really surprised how a lot of people, very wise people are coming to my show. So they they spread their wisdom. The show has been becoming really great. I'm enjoying it. Yeah. Well, that's incredible. So I really want to thank you, Jose, for coming and sharing your story. So if anybody would like to grab the book, where can they grab the book? In my webpage, you can find the link to Amazon or you can go directly to Amazon. But in my, in my book, my, in my in my webpage, you can find everything related to me. My webpage got beautiful because uh, I have there my coaching program. I have there my speaking. Yeah, anybody that wants to uh, uh, book me for, for any speaking, and they, they can see the speaking that I have there. Uh, it, it goes to my YouTube channel where I have a lot of material. Uh, and, and it has a link to my book and has all my media appearance, all my podcasts. And, and I leave my podcast recorded there because, because I do it live. It gets recorded. So I post it because people like sometimes to hear things recorded. So I, I, I put it there every week. Well, live and Where, recorded, you know, you got the good, you got the goods and the bads with that as well, right? The, the lives, you, you got the bloopers, you, you say your little oops, and then the recorded, you can like, oh, I can fix that. <laughs> well, you know, that, the only problem that I'm having, and you know that, that, that LinkedIn of your room sometimes are giving glitches, and I hate that. In the middle of, of, of somebody speaking, it it, it it turns off, so I had to go. But I have, you see my recording, I have like three phones. <laughs> 
<laughs> with backups. <laughs> You have to, right? In today's world, you need a backup. You need a plan B, C, D, E. You need those backups. If you see a photo when I'm recording the, the podcast, you can see three phones, two computers, uh, two mics, <laughs> a lot of things around. <laughs> <in case. laughs> well, thank you so much, Jose, for joining me on today's Tea Time. And I really want to thank you for sharing your story. Keep being a voice for the voiceless out there. Keep bringing awareness to these situations because I think they're deeply important. Uh, thank you to my listeners and uh, supporters out there. If you're listening to the replay, please push hashtag replay. Let Miss Liz know where you're tuning in from stay tuned the press release for the reunion show is coming out soon also the press release for december's lineup will be coming out and we will be back thursday with two incredible teas as well we have um uh we have in the in the morning uh susan susan Car carlis is coming and she's sharing her son's uh story about heart transplant and organ transplant the importance of that and then in the evening we have jm shaw coming in and she'll be talking about her callum walker series book series and autism and aahd we're, we're just going to keep talking about all these incredible topics that need to get out there uh, if you'd like to know more about Miss Liz, check out Miss Liz's website at www.misslizesteatime.com. And I will see everybody on Thursday, same time, same place. And we're going to serve tea all over again, Miss Liz style. Uh, and we do have a couple comments that I just want to put up here. Thank you, Bruce, for tuning in again. Um, He's saying thanks to you, Jose, for being here today. And we will be back Thursday, same time, same place. And we'll do this all over again. You know how Miss Liz rolls. We don't do beverage. We do storytelling and words. So until then, keep ser serving your tea, keep being real, and keep being true to yourselves. And we'll make a difference one cup of tea at a time. Thank you. Thank you for having me.